sir. term, I said this without having it on the, the overhead, but all of the variables, all of the variables match up here with the longer term. So we've got, except for the loot, which is the only thing we changed. So we got the 44 of loot, and we bumped that up to 125. But the rest of it, the probability of imprisonment, the probability, or the uh, prison time uh, factor, all of this was the same. So in terms of answering question uh, part B, <laughs> so what happens with expected utility when loot goes up? Relative to this, what happens to the expected utility? When loot goes up, it goes up, right? So you guys calculated 11. Looks like most of you had that. So our answer's up here. That factored in the equation uh, makes it more desirable to, uh, to commit the crime as the loot increases. Does the loot increase based on the prison time increases? Um, no, no I, didn't, I didn't affect prison time yet or anything. So that, that's the first part. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We didn't have these four. The prison time before. stays the same. Oh, prison time yeah. stays the same. Yes. So prison time stays the same in this so problem. The loot increases while the prison time stays the same. Yeah. And how do you know that? Because we didn't change it. Just by the assumptions, it didn't change. You know the loot increases because the utility increases. Right, and the loot was the only thing that we bumped up. So. My question then is what would cause, what could cause the expected utility to fall as the loot rises? So what are some other factors? I just want you to think about the formulas here. Longer prison time. So longer prison time, how does that end up factoring into the equation? It makes your prison cost higher. Okay, so prison cost goes up, right? So we have prison time 
times the legal income. My legal income stayed the same, it was 100. But if I put you in the slammer longer, then your opportunity cost goes up, right? So it increases your prison cost. Okay, what else could we do? Chelsea? If your legal income rose. Okay, if your legal income rose. All right, what do you think about that one? Then you're more satisfied just doing your own thing and not having to do crime. Okay, so legal income bumps this up, right? So in terms of the trade-offs, that might keep you from, from the crime. Now, but does that, getting back to what you said for the question, what would cause the expected utility to fall if the loot rises? Does that do that? Okay, good, yeah, so it's channeling in here with the prison costs, right? So that, it, so it wasn't channeling in necessarily up here, even though, I mean, it does with, if that was our status quo, but in terms of changing this formula, uh, it bumps up legal income, good. What else? There's one more. What do you mean? One more variable for this question. What would cause, what change could cause the expected utility to fall if the loot rises? So probability of prison. Right. How does that change? It's more probable that you are going to be in prison than you're expected. Like you're and how does that change? The weight on each changes. So right. Okay. That that's the. But I mean, in reality, in in real life here, how does the probability of imprisonment change? Have like stricter, like, police okay. More more police. Just quantity of officers, surveillance cameras. Right. More ways of being busted. Yeah. Then then we can increase the probability. So I just kind of want you thinking about those variables as they enter into this, and we roll into uh, number three. The next one kind of so is a what continuation. Was, what was B specific? B. Yeah, go ahead. That, that was right. What's the blank? Was you, right? I don't have my <laughs> sheet up. But <clears throat> oh, so sorry. Yeah, I don't know. It just seems like one that you could get. So the loot increases yeah. on the second yeah. time stays the same, like the expected utility of the time increases. Um, say that again, Katie. Uh, let me get my Yes, that's right. What is English? Okay, so yeah, we're rolling into, into part B. Or just on the, if you get away with it. Okay, so here's the next one. Using the first column of 3, 3 as a starting point, modify the numbers to make the loot 156 and the anguish costs from crime one util. Anguish. So the utility for federal crime is not that good util? Uh, it decreases. So the anguish, there's a, there's a cost of it costing you one. I don't know if that's exactly what you said, John. Like it doesn't drop to one, I thought you might have said. You're subtracting uh, at the margin. You've got this mor morality that kicks in that drops your, drops your um, benefit, your utility by one. So you guys are paid this up, basically. Is it expected you to be for crime drop to 10 million? Well, the, the, the So, and, and it's the first column, right? This is our this is our baseline now. The numbers have changed, by the way, right? You guys caught that? Okay. Are we looking at payoff from crime being the expected payoff, or the payoff if you actually successfully commit the crime? Well, we're dealing with expectations, right?
The anguish is something to where if you're but if you're not. chosen to be a criminal and you think that that's against uh, God's law or somebody else, whether you get caught or not, you still suffer anguish. Okay, it looks like most of you moved on. I think it was the second one. Everybody's good on first column?
said you don't subtract. You subtracted a third. Yeah, but uh, you but you gotta get you gotta get a set first. Yeah. So you would do it. It's something. I I say double organized ring. Expected utility it's a minus English model. So I feel like you did the expected utility. So you get the expected utility. Wait, so you get the expected utility and then you subtract off the one you don't find. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I got the eleven. So it's so it's going to change the answer. So it's point five times six is four. Point five times six. So you guys are subtracting off that's four. It's a lot of more. You said it's affected it either way, but it's still eleven. Right. It's still six. It's still six. So you just don't subtract the payoff from the activities. The payoff from lawful activities are going to be still. So you should get 16 and 8. This stays the same down top, down at the bottom uh, for part A. So then you subtract off your anguish cost and you get 11. Okay. Does it want to end up being the same? Yeah, get the same answer. Well, that's what I thought. You guys have the right answer. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, it's the same. Okay. I just got 11.5 on it. Because if you guys think about it on each of them, you would be just taking that one times 0.5 and subtract your one times that one times. Yeah, that's right. Total one off. Yeah, it should end up being linear, I guess, with that. Do you have 10.6 on C? What's that? 10.6 on C. Okay. Oh, on C? <laughs> Yeah, they're, I agree, it's not the, it's 9.8, not 10.8, correct? Right. So yeah, with B, the length of the prison term uh, increases 
not C. Okay. Then so they're just on. now they're adding on. So yes, C now taking those old numbers, right? Yeah, right. yeah. 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 and just so change the weight and average. Yeah. Um, just make sure you put the weight on the on the right thing. Yeah, same thing. So, so instead of the 50 50, now we just change the weightings. So we got a 0.6 probability for those 0.4, right? What's that? Yeah. I just remember. Squishy, huh? No, I, I tried to respond to everybody, so oh, let's talk about the class. Yeah, I'll talk to you. I was going to say, actually, I just started doing the class. Um, quick thing, I just wanted okay. to change the time. I'll do like innovation sales. That's just what I call it. No, there's a pretty slideshow. I have a meeting. I guess I do have somebody coming up for them. But so around two, you guys jump on our passport? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it kind of just uh, walk in the mind. That's what it'll be. OK, folks. So here's the <laughs> Let me just pass this up for you. Oh, so now we take the English class. Oh my gosh. I didn't think the long English class. So it looked like most of you had this going. So this was English. Expected English, expected utility from crime. So, everybody set on this problem? We need to figure out how to get more anguish. Right, to, to get the uh, get some positive things. Yeah, that was just extra. That wasn't a problem. That was the replication of the two things. Yes. Yeah. This is a fairly. This is a shorter one. So um, let's kind of just look. Look. See it over here. Figure thirteen point eight is starting point. Suppose the marginal victim cost increases to nineteen hundred while the marginal prevention cost curve is unchanged. So marginal prevention cost. This at first glance is kind of weird. Talk to me here. Isn't the cost curve supposed to be going up? It seemed like we uh, in class usually have a marginal cost, marginal benefit. What's going on with this? Cost curve. But that is the benefit. The marginal prevention costs. Is the benefit to distribute less? Or is it something to prevent? Okay, so is it consistent with our normal logic? I would think so. So what's, what's one of the things that's driving this thing looking down? Because as you increase prevention, crime needs. Okay, crime is going what direction when we go this way on the horizontal axis? And is crime a good or a bad? Bad. A bad. So that, that's one of the little subtle differences here is that we normally have beer down here. More beer is better, right? Here, now we've got crimes and we're measuring a bad. More crime is bad. 
And so as we start to look, it is consistent with that, that if we have to spend money, the cost of prevention goes up as we start to reduce less and less crime, then the costs are increasing at the margin. But when you're putting a bad on the horizontal axis, we get a little bit odd looking thing. Okay. So marginal victim costs, we actually looked at in some previous chapters too, where some economists estimated spatially within the city uh, where victims were, um, where victims are and how much their cost was. So go ahead and just draw right on this graph, but then you're gonna need to do a little bit of calculations to answer the question. saying that it's not worth it if it costs more than it actually costs the victim in the crime if, since we wouldn't go over that amount with this model yes okay is it efficient from society's perspective to we're not dealing with utility hers is one criticism that would be fair here right we're dealing with cost and if we're thinking about crimes, we're really expected cost. If we're looking forward rather than looking backward, right, it'd be expected cost. And so as the cost of the crime, if, if, uh, if we think that the, the victim, whoever gets hurt, the most it's gonna cost them is 50 bucks, then should we spend uh, $4,300 on you know, or some, something high to try to reduce that victim cost even further. So for, is this, from what theory would this kind of matter? Because I, I'm just speaking yeah, more so kind that? of like looking back to so like how we talked about Hayek or anybody yeah. like that. So I'm thinking that he would say that these crimes are against, you know, fraud or something like that. Would that kind of tie in there? I would say that shouldn't the duty of the law be to protect all people who are being punished against well, their property rights? I think, I think Hayek would support using the marginal analysis in that respect because without it, it means bigger and bigger government spending. Big, bigger government, yeah. right? Because if there's no co if we don't consider the cost and we only look at the benefits. No, I don't think so. I think it would be consistent with it. Oh, yeah. uh, what would always go against his theory would be more of uh, ignoring property rights. So if, if we feel like we've got a victim and that victim, um, you know, I guess has a, a right to be protected, but when we're thinking again about moving forward, they're either going to be harmed, there's a probability of getting harmed, and there's a probability of not being harmed, kind of like what we were doing before. So in expect, expected value. All right, has everybody got this? What would you get for an answer? 60. 60, good. So a little bit of slope, rise over run to get 60. We bring this up. We got the slope of the line. You can calculate. It ends up being 60. Can you do that? I'm not sure it's something. If you do the slope intercept, you want the line. If I had a pencil. Didn't I? Wasn't I using a pencil? So we're going up to 1,900. You shifted this up, okay? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I just did the line. Okay. So then, this line is following down 20. Right. Rise of a run. So over 20. There's a line. Is that 90 minus 70? And then we're going up 700 to 1,500 is 800, which is exactly what we're at. Flip it over. 
next one, we've got some substitution going on. So the next model. Should we be tough on burglars or tough on robbers? What's the difference between burglars and robbers? I don't know. Did you get that Nope. Not the value. So burglary is breaking into somebody's home and stealing stuff. So both of them were monetary. I mean, you were a thief. Robber is going up to you and mugging you. So it's a physical assault. So when you rob somebody, it, it's, a, it's a little more physical. Uh, burglars can be not necessarily confronting you with it. So anyway, just some distinctions on uh, that. And then over here, we've got lawful workers. So. What happens if we start to get stiff on crime here? So the first, this 13.9, this description here describes what's going on with this picture. And then the question just asks you to think about it uh, in a little bit, with a little bit different numbers, kind of similar to what we did. So <clears throat> with a higher penalty, we think about the net return, the way they've got this described. Here is your return from lawful work. Here's your net return if you are a robber or if your criminal choices are such that you prefer to be a burglar, uh, there's your net return. So what do you do if you are a rational criminal? Let's kind of step away from this for a second. What is the best thing to do? Should I go commit a burglary? Should I go commit a robbery or should I stay lawful? What goes into your mind? What goes into the equation when you're thinking about that? Well, you have to decrease from 18 people. Chelsea? Okay, your net return. And what goes into that calculation? Well, Michael? Uh, how many people are also doing the same thing? Okay, yeah. So you got something with the number of people possibly, which is going to affect the probability of? success, right, and how much stuff is going on and the probability of getting caught, a lot of the stuff that we just talked about. So if we alter that probability and we, uh, the net return with a higher penalty, so we stiffen up the jail time, we stiffen up the penalty, whatever it is, it drops down the net return here. Now if you're a crook, what do you start doing? Right, shift into, well, no, no not Rob. I thought, yeah, yeah, I saw you looking this direction. Was, and, yeah, all that. right, so then this initial drop from B to C is not really sustainable. It's no longer equilibrium, right? So the net return has fallen, and it's like, oh, well, geez, I could go, I could go rob somebody else over here and get uh, expected 70 at the initial starting place, or I might even become lawful. And so as we start to impose those crimes, we have people substituting stop being burglars, some of them are gonna start being robbers. So we got this equilibrium process of, now I go into here, but that dropped the net return. So the next guy says, I'm gonna go lawful. And then the next return, you see kind of we have this equilibrating process yeah. of eventually bringing us up here because as people stop becoming burglars, there's more loot available for burglaries, right? So that comes up. And so the point with all this is that in equilibrium, we have the expected net returns the same from each activity. At the margin, each person's making these choices as we go. And so we gotta be careful of that uh, substitution effect as we, as we so look. The burglars is self-correcting or self-reinforcing? Um, like we talked about, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Does that come into play at all? Yeah, I'm not sure you're, you're wording it exactly right, but what do you think? I, I think I see what you're saying. Like you're, like you're moving from Z to C on the burglary curve. So, so was it, did the policy have the intent that we desired? Less burglaries. Right. So yes, if that's kind of what yeah. you meant by self-correcting, right? Yeah. So we changed the policy and yes, we have less burglary. The unintended consequences might be the bump up in robbery right. that we didn't think about, that there'd be substitution back, <laughs> to, back to another spot. Oh, did Katie get locked out? Just leave it cracked, I don't know. So what's the problem? Okay, 
So the problem here, using the initial equilibrium as a starting point, so we're just going to look at V, R, and L. Suppose an increase in the penalty for burglary decreases the equilibrium from 20 to 2. So we're going to change it from 20 to 2. The total social cost of crime will be unchanged if the number of robberies increases from what to what? So what would cause social cost now? We're, we're kind of stretching this one a little bit. What goes on with social cost? Well, the more robberies or burglaries you have, the ooh, scarier it is to go outside and Okay, so some utility stuff would be going on, right? Well, so we could think about th those sorts of issues. Which you, if, I mean, if you have less burglars, the social cost would also include, include the diminished net return for people who are doing lawful things here. Because if you have more people there, their net return is going to go down. There could be an effect. Of, that's kind of what you're saying, right? With the, right. Um, that, that people feel more unsafe with one or the other? No, I was just saying, yeah. even if it is, if it becomes safer, then you have more lawful workers. Okay. And so you go down the curve on the lawful workers. Okay. Lawful, so that makes sense. Right, okay. Um, what about with robbery and burglary? What would factor into this? If we're shifting people from being burglars into people being robbers, what else would go into the... If you were an economist kind of studying this and you like wanted to come up, is that a good policy or bad policy? And you kind of knew that that was going to happen. Bad policy. What's some other data that you might look at? How harmed the people are that are being robbed. Yes. What else? What else in terms of harm? Monetary cost. Yeah. Right? So if we knew that robberies were, like I said, kind of the face-to-face, -face, I steal, so that you might have a utility effect there. Which that's is hard to estimate, right? Hard to measure. Right? But the monetary cost is something that is easier to measure that we saw in even some other chapters when we look at criminal costs. So uh, <clears throat> when we look at the offset of this, if there's not, if robberies end up having, uh, the, this is in the textbook, so I want you to write this down. Uh, it wasn't, I meant to kind of put it up in the problem, but I didn't, I kind of forgot to. Um, Robberies have nine times the cost of burglary. So robberies represent nine times the cost of burglary. And so if we drop it from 20 to 2, that's great. We saved 18 burglaries. But if we ramped up robberies, we can start to think about the trade-off of cost in terms of just crime, so the number of robberies that occur, what's the dollar value associated with each robbery? So would it drop down to 18? Or increase to 22? Maybe up to 22. 22, that's right. So... You got that, John. It's <coughs> all you. So, I need to think... So yeah, I'm going to hire you as my economist. <laughs> okay. need I to think that. about the... <laughs> So this is, you can just make a little note here that this is from the text that gave you that data. I was going to write it into the problem, but. Okay. 
So. All right, so since you got the papers coming up, um, we'll hold off on homework until we'll kind of combine both of those. I want you guys to uh, give ample, ample time for that.